Hello everyone, I'm glad you are taking the time to listen to this teaching about your heart. I want to start out by explaining why I am doing this video series. I believe Christ Jesus is coming back soon for his bride. When he comes back, it will be like the flood in the days of Noah. Matthew 24 verses 38 to 39 says, For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. So why did the flood happen in the days of Noah? Genesis 6 verse 5 tells us, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This is why the flood happened. What do we need to do in order to avoid this destruction that is coming upon the earth? We must establish our hearts for the coming of the Lord draws near. This means we need to bear precious fruit. James chapter 5 verses 7 and 8 says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the the early end latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Allow me to now summarize the reason why I'm doing this video series. The wrath of God is coming, and we have an opportunity to escape His wrath. His wrath is coming because the heart of man is continually thinking evil. We must establish our hearts by bearing precious fruit in order to escape. Please take the time to look up the scriptures I just referenced and read them. There are four conditions of the heart, and only one of them is suitable for the coming of the Lord. The other three are worthy of His wrath. In this four-part video series, I will explain what it takes to establish the one heart that the Lord wants to see when He comes back for His bride. The first heart, as mentioned in the parable of the sower, is the uncircumcised heart. This heart does not understand the word, and the wicked one comes and steals the word away from the heart of the person. How do I know we are speaking of an uncircumcised heart? Let's go look at Jeremiah 4 verses 3 and 4, which says, for thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and do not sow among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the foreskins of your hearts. You men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn so that no one can quench it, because of the evil of your doings. These two verses in Jeremiah speak about the three heart conditions that will bring the wrath of God by telling us how to fix each heart condition. The third heart condition mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 4 is the first heart condition mentioned in the parable of the sower. This heart condition needs circumcision. Deuteronomy 10 verse 16 says, Therefore circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be stiff-necked no longer. How does someone do this? Deuteronomy 30 verse 6 tells us, And the Lord your God will circumcise your hearts and the heart of your descendants, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. Some people have a theology that the Holy Spirit did not come to man until Christ gave up his life on the cross. If this was the case, then how can you explain Acts chapter 7 verse 51, where Stephen said to the Jews, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Did you catch that? You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. This can be difficult for some to grasp, but it is as simple as this. There were times under the Old Covenant that the Holy Spirit came and touched man. An example of this is in 1 Samuel 10 verse 6, 
Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Now let's look at how the Holy Spirit circumcises our hearts. 2 Corinthians 3 verses 14 to 18 says, But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. The veil on the heart is the condition of being uncircumcised. When one turns to the Lord Jesus Christ, then the veil is taken away by the Spirit of the Lord. Once this veil is taken away, then the person has an understanding heart. They will be able to hear and understand the Word of God. Colossians 2 verse 11 tells us, In him you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Romans 2 verse 29 says, But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter whose praise is not from men, but from God. This circumcision of the heart is not done with the hands of man, but by the Spirit of God. I believe it is done when a person is born again. Under the law, a baby is circumcised on the eighth day after birth. I believe something similar happens when a person is born again. They are also circumcised in their heart. John chapter 3 verses 3 to 8 says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Jesus mentions being born again with water and the Spirit. This is a picture of being baptized in water and also in the Spirit. When John the Baptist baptized Jesus in water, then immediately he was also baptized in the Spirit. Christ Jesus paved a path for us to follow at that moment. The path starts when he was baptized, then he fasted, then he was tempted, then he started ministering to people. To recap, once a person believes in Christ Jesus and confesses him with their mouth, then the very next thing they should do is get baptized in water and spirit. The Holy Spirit circumcises the heart. When we are born again, we are circumcised in heart. This resembles a natural birth, then circumcision on the eighth day. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 46, However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. Once you have been baptized in water and in the Spirit, then your heart will be circumcised, because you have turned towards Christ, and the veil has been removed from your heart. When the veil is removed, then you will be able to hear the word and understand it. Jesus tells us, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now that you know how to get past the uncircumcised heart condition, please take the time to become circumcised in heart if you have not already. I encourage you to bear precious fruit for the kingdom of God and be a wise virgin. The coming of the Lord draws near. Please watch the second video of this series in order to learn how to break up a stony heart.